What's good everybody, it's U-Turn Crowbit here, you turning into you today with week 2 of the WPE. But before we get into anything, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, please make sure you give this video a gigantic like, because all that support, it really does help me out in the long run. Uh, we're going up against, like I said, actually I don't th think I even said, I didn't say. We're going up against the uh, Chicago Bulus, aka Professor Zabi. His Twitter link and all that good stuff will be down below in the description. So this week we are bringing Strong Style to Hitmonlee. Bad Influence, the Manaphy, Susan Q, the, uh, the Nerd Queen. We're bringing, um, I already forgot the re-nickname of Renuculus, but we're bringing Renuculus, we're bringing, uh, Weavile, and we are bringing the Vajramon, the Tapu Bulu. Now, we're bringing Hitmonlee with a actually really, really tricky-ass set. We're bringing Hitmonlee with Endure, Close Combat, Rapid Spit, and Knockoff. So we're, ho we're having him hold the Lychee Berry. Uh, which it raises the holders attack by one stage so if we are able to lose that HP then it will in fact get rid of our item and the unburdened um, ability will activate raising our speed so this could potentially be used in the long run in the end of the battle to kind of pick up the win for us and we're bringing bad influence which is just a calm mind scald rain dance rest with leftovers a uh, hydration bold uh, 252 is HP, 172 is defense, 84 in speed with bold, like I mentioned. Um, but going back to strong style, because Hitmonlee is 68 HP, 252 attack, 188 in speed with a jolly nature. And Suzu Q, the Noodle Queen, has uh, Stealth Rock, Toxic Spikes, Earth Power, and Ice Beam. Uh, Black Sludge, uh, Shear Force, a 252 HP, 60 special attack, 196 in speed F with a bold nature. Renuclus is Regenerator Assault Vest with Shadow Ball, Psychic, Focus Blast, Energy Ball, 252 HP, 4 in Defense, 252 in Special Attack, and it's a modest nature, guys. That's pretty dope. We're bringing Sneaky Bitch the Weavile, uh, Pressure, Expert Belt, Ice Shard, Low Kick, Pursuit, Knockoff, 252 Attack, 92 Speed F, 164 in Speed with a Jolly Nature, and Vajramon the Tapu Bulu with the Yachi Berry, Sub Horn Leech, Superpower, Mega Horn, 252 HP, 132 in attack, 124 in speed, with an adamant nature. Now, our opponent, Professor Zabi, the Chicago Bulus, their roster consists of Heatran, Mega Aerodactyl, Shinotic, Latios, Umbreon, Cloyster, Quagazar, Feraligator, Devour, Desclops, and Scarafty. Uh, during team building, we knew he was going to be bringing Heatran, we knew he was going to be bringing Mega Aerodactyl, Shinotic he definitely was not going to bring, Latios, I did feel like he was, in fact, going to be bringing Umbreon, yes. Uh, Cloyster was a possibility. It was on the, it was, we were thinking that he was going to be bringing Cloyster. Quagsire, we have, we've kind of had a, quite a few things for Quagsire. So we weren't really sure he was going to be bringing that. For Alligator, we, it was kind of 50-50 with For Alligator because even though For Alligator can set up on us, we have things that can, that can kind of handle For Alligator. Not so much the Electivire, though. Now, he could have brought the Electivire. He did not, luckily. Uh, because that Electivire, because it is just so versatile, it could have done a number on our team. And uh, Dusclops, we... we I, uh, regarding Dusclops, I figured he... I don't know. See, we do have things that can handle Dusclops as well. I wasn't really sure if he was going to be bringing that, but... Um, Scrafty, I knew he wasn't going to bring. Uh, but Professor Zavi... Decided to bring the Latios, the Heatran, the Mega Aerodactyl, the Quagsire, the Umbreon, and that Dusclops. I know for a fact, looking at his team, that Mega Aerodactyl is going to be doing a number on our team. So I really, really need to work around that. Umbreon and Dusclops are there just to be an annoyance. And this, guys, is actually the second battle that we had because first time around, I lost power. It was like thundering and lightning and all sh kinds of shit. So I lost power, DC'd, obviously. And so we had to go back and replay our moves, our turns, and we were able to get everything all situated and we were able to finish the battle, luckily. But let's just hop into the battle and you guys can kind of see what goes down. Um, the first few turns we we did have to redo like I mentioned only because I lost power but luckily we were able to remember what the hell we did um, he's gonna lead off with the Latios here I I thought <clears throat> excuse me I thought maybe he was gonna lead Heatran but looking at some of uh, Professor Zavi's battles I figured he was gonna be too I don't I, I don't know how else to say it but too good to lead Heatran like he knows what he's doing 
And so, I guess Latios could have been a potential lead. And I'm glad that he did lead Latios. As you see, I did switch out because I don't want to get hit with, uh... I figured he wasn't going to go for a Draco. Because Tapu Bulu is right there. And so, I figured he's going to go at least for some sort of, uh... Psychic move or like a Shadow Ball or something. But... But, Renucleus is our Mon to kind of take those Latios attacks. And Jintai, I wanted to, At this point in time... I really wanted to go for um, just a mid-level play. I really wanted, and uh, and also during this turn, during this turn we did hit Umbreon with that Shadow Ball, and it did not lower the special defense. But now, unfortunately, it does. Kind of sucks. But I know I don't want to get hit with any Dark type moves at all. I really, really want Jintai to be healthy for later on in the ballot. I know I'm gonna need him. I'm switching into a Pokemon that I know can take a Dark type move in um in Virajimon here. And if you wanted to go for a foul play, foul play like he's doing, I know that I can just take that. Uh, because Virajimon is just a really good Pokemon to really use. It has, it has good, um, uh, good stats all around and, and grassy terrain. It's not going to really hurt me that much. So he does not want anyone on his team to take a superpower. He doesn't really want anyone to take a horn leech. But honestly, I'm perfectly safe just to go for a free substitute, as you're going to see here momentarily. I'm not exactly sure why he switched in Dusclops, only because Dusclops, barring going for a Willow, can't do anything to Virajimon. And because we are behind the sub, he can't go for a Willow anyways. So I think he realizes that, and he needs to switch out right now and go into the Heatran. We are, in fact, going to be going for a, uh, a Horn Leech. And looking at the damage that Horn Leech is going to be doing to Heatran... Yeah, it's not gonna be doing. A, it's not gonna be doing a lot, obviously, because uh, Heatran basically just resists that thing. But at the same time, Virajimon is just a powerful Pokemon. No one really wants to go into it. There's no really. There's no switch-ins at all for a Virajimon. Um, at this point in time, I was actually thinking I could have potentially went for a safe sub and also a safe Sword Stance had we had it. Uh, we don't, and right now, I kind of have to play around with going for superpowers, going for horn leeches. It's kind of annoying, because obviously, Dusclops is a ghost type. It can't be hurt with any fighting type moves. And if I keep going for horn leeches, at some point, I'll be able to hit the fucking Dusclops with a horn leech. Because that heat train doesn't really want to get hit with a horn leech plus a superpower. But as you're going to see right here, the horn leech does a shit ton of damage to that Dusclops. It does a fair amount, where I know that I can just, at some point... When I feel safe enough to do so, I can just really keep spamming Horn Leech. Um, that Dark Pulse is not going to be doing nearly enough to break our sub, which I'm really glad about because now Virajimon is not going to be getting hurt with anything. I just really wish we had like a setup move, Sora Stance or something, because I feel like that would have a done a lot more damage. If we used a Sewer Stance and went for Horn Leech, it would have done a lot more to the Dusclops. And yeah, we probably would have Oko the fucking Heatran um, with like a, an SD plus a Superpower. So I kind of, I kind of wish we did have that, but it didn't really. This team, this uh, team in this battle didn't really call for a Sword Stance like Tapu Bulu. He's gonna go ahead and calm mind up, and momentarily after we hit another Horn Leech, you are going to be seeing Dust Cups go for a rest. Now, the one thing about this, uh, this Dust Cups that I like is not is that it's it's the rest set. It's not holding. It's not holding the Chasu Berry, so I'm glad that it's not going to be waking up. Also, the thing that I hate about it is the fact, well, it's a rest set, so it's really annoying, and he already set up a Calm Mind. But luckily for me, we do have a few turns before he actually does wake up. I really want to go, I really want to scare him out, to be honest. I'm going into Sneaky Bitch, and no one on his team wants to get hit with a knockoff. No one on his team really wants to get hit... Well, really just with a knockoff, honestly. He's going to switch out, and he's actually going to be going into Heatran. And as you're going to see here, this knockoff is going to do an ass ton of damage to the Heatran. I mean, take a look at that. And we do have the low kick specifically for the Heatran, which we are able to connect. We are able to take out the Heatran. Luckily, we're not able to deal with that anymore. Heatran's gone for the battle. And that's one Pokemon that I don't have to deal with anymore. Just because he could have set up his rocks. I would have had to deal with a possible Toxicking Heatran. And it just would have been kind of annoying. But I really need to switch out. Literally nobody on my team wants to get hit with an Iron Head. No one on my team wants to get hit with a Stone Edge. No one on my team wants to get hit with an EQ from a Mega Aerodactyl. I was predicting an Iron Head right here, and the only Pokemon that can quote-unquote handle getting hit with an Iron Head is Suzy Q. 
and we could potentially scare it out with an Ice Beam, but obviously Mega Aerodactyl is going to be out speeding, and we hadn't seen the EQ yet. I was I was about 50%, nope, I was, up, I was actually about like 80% sure that he did have it, he just didn't really show it. Um, but I knew that if he did have it from that range, we could live. I did calc it, and I did feel comfortable leaving Suzu Q in, getting hit with the EQ just so I could set up my rocks. That was my main reason for switching Suzu Q in. I really needed the rocks because it was really, it was really a plan for late game, honestly. Because if we set up our rocks, then Mega Aerodactyl is going to have to keep switching in on those rocks. And that is one Pokemon that I really want to get worn down. So those rocks are going to help us out a lot. They're really, really going to benefit us in the long run. Suzu Q goes down. I go into Bad Influence. He's going to get scared out, obviously. Because he's a, he does not want his um, Aerodactyl to get hit with a Scald. Yeah, I could have predicted him to switch out. But because it was still somewhat early in the battle, I didn't really want to over-predict. And unfortunately, our Manaphy gets completely shut down with the Quagsire because we have the Rain Dance, we have the Scald, and it's not going to really do anything to Quagsire because it is Water Absorb. I'm going to go into Virajimon, simply because I know that Virajimon can handle this fucking Quagsire, and at the same time, because it was Quagsire versus Manaphy, I was about 85% sure he was not going to be going for a Water Titan move, he was in fact going to go for a Toxic. He had, he had, he had, if I can talk, he honestly had a fucking safe Toxic to go for. I didn't, honestly, no one on my team wanted to get hit with a Toxic, but at least I knew that if I allow Barajamon to get hit with a Toxic, then I can work around that. We have the Grassy Terrain Recovery anyways, so I felt somewhat comfortable for at least, with, um, with, with Barajamon getting hit with the Toxic, I didn't mind that much. But luckily for me, it is Weavile versus Latios. He is going to be switching out, because why the fuck would you not switch out on a fucking Weavile? We do pack the Pursuit for this for, for this specific, if I can talk, for this specific reason. Uh, Weavile really needed to take care of that Latios. Lucky he was able to do so. Sneaky Bitch is called Sneaky Bitch for a goddamn reason, because we did pack that Pursuit. Yeah, it wasn't really all that sneaky, but we packed the Pursuit for that Latios. Plain and simple. I'm gonna go into Bad Influence. Um, I was predicting an Iron Head, which I do predict right. But as you're gonna see here, and as you're going to remember what I said earlier in the battle, I mentioned that nobody on my team wants to get hit with an EQ. Nobody on my team wants to get hit with a Stone Edge. So as you're gonna see here momentarily, this fucking actually is later in the battle. I'm just forget what I said, because I do remember him getting scared that we were going to go for a Scald. He honestly did not want to leave his Mega Aerodactyl in the way of a fucking Manaphy. I mean, why would you? You could potentially get uh, Scald burned. You could just get worn down so bad. So I, I agree with him switching right there. I obviously, I obviously do. This Quagsire is our Manaphy switch in, and I could have predicted him to switch out again, but I... I wanted to see what the fuck he was going to do, because there are times where I thought he could have just stayed in. Luckily for me, Renuculus is able to eat up the Scald. Now, during the battle, during our first time battling, uh, Jintai here did get burned, so because we were battling the second time, obviously shit went down and we didn't get burned. I don't think it really mattered all that much, though. We, honest we honestly just had to land two fucking Focus Blasts. We were able to land two of them in the first battle. Um, not that it matters, but Umbreon's special defense did fall right now. It, like, the reason why I say it doesn't matter is because we're going to connect with another Focus Blast here, um, as you're going to see here momentarily. Now, the reason why I kept saying it doesn't matter is because it really just secured Umbreon to go down. In the first battle, Umbreon went down. We really needed Umbreon to go down right now if we we're going to recreate everything perfectly. So that Spadef drop kind of just helped us out. Um, early in the battle, I mentioned that I didn't really want Renuculus taking any Dark-type moves. As you saw right there, Foul Play did a fair amount, but I really needed to hit that another Focus Blast. And we have Regenerator, so it doesn't really concern me all that much. But I'm going to go into Bad Influence because I'm figuring he's going to go for something. I mean, obviously he's going to go for something. I, the only Pokemon that I knew that could take, and when I say take, I fucking say take very goddamn loosely. I knew that Bat Influence could take an EQ or a Stone Edge. Uh, like I said, um, I say it very loosely because Manaphy, uh, Manaphy 
did not like that fucking stone edge at all. I'm going to go for another skull because even as long as I see, as long as I see a mega aerodactyl in my way, I absolutely need to attack. I need to go for a skull on the slight chance he does stay in looking for that uh, stone edge crit or something so he could take out Manaphy but I need to switch out I need to go back into Reed Nucleus right here because I'm predicting him to either go for another skull or go for a toxic either way Reed Nucleus needs to be status I really wish that he end up getting burnt and not poisoned but Reed Nucleus needed to be status anyways because in the first battle he was he needed to be status in the second battle just to make things a little bit fair, I'm going for a shadow plot, a shadow, wow, a shadow ball, because I felt that it was a safe middle ground play, and I expected him to switch out. I didn't want to reveal energy ball quite yet uh, during that turn, because I expected him to switch out, and shadow play was a safe middle ground play, but because I'm feeling like he's going to be staying in, I'm very, very fucking tempted to go for an energy ball right now. Um, the reason why I'm revealing it right now, yeah, he could have switched out, but because we didn't reveal it that first turn, I feel I felt like he was going to be staying in, because maybe he was thinking that the only move that we had to hit a Quagsire was, like, Shadow Ball or some shit. So I was figuring he was going to stay in. Luckily, my prediction was right. He did. We take Quagsire out with the Energy Ball, and right now, I have to face off against this fucking Mega Aerodactyl once again. At this point in time, I really need to look at my team and decide who is more, who's not putting, who is not putting in any work. Who is my least expendable Pokemon to just let go? Um, now, Strong Style was not putting in any work at all, so he unfortunately had to be my choice just so I could get a free switch in. Because right now, Sneaky Bitch can easily just take off uh, this Mega Aerodactyl with an Ice Shard. I talked to Zavi after the battle, and he was expecting Weavile to have the Ice Shard. He was probably expecting Weavile to use the Ice Shard a lot more than we did in this battle, um, but we really needed Aerodactyl to be worn down a lot more with those rocks, so I could feel safe to go for an Ice Shard, because if Mega Aerodactyl was at full, I don't know, maybe he had an investment in Mega Aerodactyl where he could have at least one Ice Shard, and then just destroy Weavile with an Iron Head, you know what I mean? So I wanted to just, I wanted to be safe, I wanted to play safe. The only Pokemon he has left is the Dusclops, and he does not approve of getting hit with a fucking knockoff. And even with the second knockoff, he's not gonna like that at all because we end up taking Dusclops out. Huh. <sighs> Week 2 of the WPE, the new London Zorox win, which I'm very, very thankful for. This team was very deadly, it honestly was. The only Pokemon that that he brought that I felt scared our team was the Mega Aerodactyl. He had other mods on his roster like Electivire, like Feraligator, that could have put in work. Had he brought them, they could have potentially put in work. Had he brought Electivire though, with this specific, with this with this particular team, maybe we could have worked around uh, the Electivire, but that Electivire can be so versatile that we kind of had to figure out what kind of set he was while Electivire just destroying one of our mons. So I am kind of glad that he didn't bring that Electivire. Uh, had he brought Electivire other than Mega Aerodactyl, I probably would have felt a little more comfortable, but he kind of had to bring Mega Aerodactyl. That Mega Aerodactyl just destroys our team. As you saw, the fucking Stone Edge did so much goddamn damage to Manaphy, and I'm just super hyped that we're able to defeat Professor Zavi and pick up another win in the WPE. But if you guys enjoy this battle and if you guys are supporting the series, the series of all my league battles, then please leave a like on all of the battles. They really do help support the little quote unquote uh, series. It's not really a series, but it just, it does help support me nonetheless. And if you guys think that I need to change anything up, then just let me know down in the comments. But other than that, I'm going to get the hell out of here. I hope all of you have a great day, and I'll catch all of you all on the flip side.